Shubham Gupta writes, John said there could be a conflict between Whedon and Marvel because of recent comments from Whedon. Do you think it is because of the runtime of Age of Ultron and Whedon wasn't allowed to make what he wanted to make as he has said that his original final cut was more than three hours long and this film is only as long as the first one. Do you think Disney or Marvel interfered because I do think that some things were rushed in the movie? Um, well, I, let's remember, there is nothing definitive that says there's conflict between Whedon and, and Marvel. We were just, you know, we were speculating because of some of the comments, some very questionable comments. I, I'm a, you know, sorry, George, you know, Joss Whedon is my master now sort of t-shirt wearing mm -hmm. type of guy. <laughs> I, I love Joss Whedon. I think he's great. But he's been making some very questionable uh, comments lately that that I think reasonably you can look at and say, I wonder if there's a lot of tension between him and there. But that's not to say that there absolutely is. No. They, there would not be any tension because he's not allowed to make a movie over three hours long. All directors turn in a cut. And usually, I mean, just ask John Schnapp. I think John Schnapp's first cut of his movie was like four and a half hours long. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's the way it is. And you then you got to reel it in. You got to bring in a little pressure. Plus, there's no such thing as interfering with something that is yours. Avengers is not Joss Whedon's. Avengers is Marvel's. You know, a, a lot of people forget that. Everybody thinks that just Joss, they handed the whole thing to Joss Whedon. He just ran with it. Remember, Joss Whedon's first script for the first Avengers included Wasp. It, inclu it included no Black Widow. And then Kevin Feige came in and said, okay, but for our bigger picture, we don't want Wasp in now. We do want Black Widow, blah, blah, blah. And Whedon's always said that's the way it should work with collaboration with the studio. So I don't think it has to do with interference. I don't think it has to do with not being able to put out a three-plus-hour movie, which I don't think many people wanted anyway. So I, I think if there – if – if there is problems, it's probably has to do with a number of other issues, but I don't yeah. think those would be it. What do you, how do you see it? Yeah, no, runtime wouldn't. I mean, you know that as a director going into this. I mean, yeah, you can say, no, I want that extra scene or this or that, but it's not just your show. There's so many, especially when you're stepping into the MCU where it's so calculated. And this is not his first rodeo with the team, with Feige and everyone. And that's why they wanted him to come back because he did such a great job. Also from my conversations with Joss and just everything, why he's been so successful, he's not the the largest egotistical man where you can't give him feedback. He really seems like he would take it. So I don't think we're ever going to really know what's happening unless they want us to. And like, why speculate? If you liked Avengers, which I did, then that's all I really care about. And I really respect him as a filmmaker and also Feige above everything because of his vision. So I don't really get into the drama too much, but it, definitely it's not about the runtime. Five years from now, John Schnepp presents the death of the Joss Whedon Marvel <laughs> relationship. What happened? Okay, anyway, Mark. It, actually, I'm a little excited to see when this thing comes out on Blu-ray if we get like a Joss Whedon cut, like the Donner cut of Superman yeah, 2. Cool. If we Ooh. get to see more Avengers Age of Ultron, because I think the movie's awesome. And there are parts where you're like, oh, I want to know more about that story and about that story. But you got to remember, not only are we returning the six characters from the original Avengers, which was a full two-hour film, mm -hmm. you're adding two more characters. You have a villain that's more of a presence. You have another storyline that's getting deeper and darker. So you're not going to be able to make a three-hour movie. Joss Whedon, I think, knew that going in. And I don't have a big problem with a director fighting for his art a little bit and saying, like, oh, man, I wish I could have had that or I wish I could have had that. The other thing is, Joss Whedon is exhausted. He was hopped up on painkillers because he brought broke his leg yeah. at some point during the filming. I've been on painkillers before. You don't always say things you mean. Sometimes things <laughs> warble out of your mouth. And I think that he's just sick of getting the same questions. I think it's maybe the right time for him to be jumping off the Marvel ship and letting the Russo brothers take over for Infinity War and for Civil War. But I think that, that everybody's taking Joss Whedon's comments a little bit out of context per and usual. are overblowing them a little bit. Yeah, I, like it's it, That explains a lot because we'll be sitting around here in the AMC Movie News office and I'll hear these like outrageously offensive and inappropriate comments being yelled out, and I'll like I'll yell Ellis, and you'll just hear this voice yelling out, "Painkillers!" All right, no problem. We're good.